everyone's Pete here and look what I've got, it's the Tamiya Hornet re-release kit. So if you've been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I had one of these before and you may also know that I had a fire in 2018 when I lost most of my collection including the poor Tamiya Hornet. So I'm going to be unboxing the kit in a minute, first I thought I'd have a little bit of a chit chat about the Hornet. So I remember back in the 80s as a teenager and I was well into Tamiya, I already had the Holiday Buggy and had the Wild Willy and I was looking at the other kits in the shop and I remember the original Grasshopper coming out and I wasn't so keen on the sort of angular design of the body of that one and then a bit later the Hornet came out and I was quite keen on it but uh, I never had it at that time because you haven't got unlimited funds unfortunately and by the time I did have some funds I spent them on the Tamiya FAV which I think was a pretty good choice actually and uh, sort of like the scale look of it and the fact that it was based on a real army buggy. So fast forward 30 something years and I'm back into the RC hobby and I'm looking to get some of those Tamiya kits that I missed out on first time around. So eventually I got around to the Tamiya Hornet re-release and I did it in this rather fetching shade of Tamiya PS34 bright red. Now most of these clips are from before I put the front lights on this but I did put them on eventually as you can see here and I reckon they look quite good and give it a little bit more character. So I'm going to do the new one the same colour because I think it goes really well with the stickers and also it's a little bit different from the box art. So performance wise you have to say that the hoppers and the Hornet included are sort of of a different age and uh, they don't really corner that well and this sort of hop along but they are kind of fun. Now I think the spike tires on the Hornet are the best of the bunch of the Tamiya tires that are around at the time which was sort of block ones on the Rough Rider and the paddle ones on the Sand Scorcher. These spike ones sort of really dig into the wet ground and uh, I say this is where this is really good I think actually in the winter when the ground's all soggy you can sort of blast it through all the puddles and everything and uh, it does keep going despite being two wheel drive it uh, does carry on going so uh, yeah it's really good in that way. So I think a big advantage of the simple design of this where you've got the motor and the gearbox and the back axle all as one unit it means that the water and the mud doesn't really get in where it shouldn't so much and uh, you don't ruin the bearings going out on the wet and the mud. It's fair to say that a modern four wheel drive RC car or truck will perform better in the wet and the mud but then when you come to use it a few days later you might find all your bearings are rusted up and you've got to replace them at great expense but with the Hornet which is a similar setup to the lunchbox it's probably only going to be the front wheel bearings and the ones on the ends of the back axle so not much to replace if they do go rusty. It's worth saying that if you're after a cheapish Tamiya kit that actually handles quite well then you're better off with one of the modern ones like the DTO2 or the DTO3s that come with oil shocks all round rather than just on the back which is what this one's got and they've also got a better suspension set up but if what you want is a slice of Tamiya history then this might be the buggy for you. Okay I think that's enough chit chat let's get on with the unboxing. It's just a note from Time Tunnel Models to say you don't get the speed controller which I knew so I'm not going to go into huge detail with this I think most people who watch these know what you get in a Tamiya kit let's have a quick look at some things. So what's nice about this it's one of the old school boxes where they divide the box in half and they've got sort of the parts trees there and then the chassis body here and most of the other bits in this box here. Okay so you've got the body which needs cutting out so the previous one I did, I did sort of with paint, I did black around here and across these bars here and sort of red for the rest of it. And I seem to remember it was quite a pain to mask up, but I am going to try and do that again. I always like to do things in paint where possible because it won't scratch off when it rolls over because you do get stickers for these roll bars here which are in silver but so I'm going to try and do the same as I did last time. You've got your wing there. Now what I did last time, actually I bought a spare body and I had double skinned it and it made the wing much stronger so the you know, real weak point is this wing so it's just got these little posts here and what I did also I think I filled those up with Sugru I think I did the same at the top and I think I put an extra bit of Lexan across so I did a lot of things to try and strengthen the wings that's always got a weak point when it rolls over so I'll be doing something similar I'm not going to buy a whole new body but uh, I, I sort of use tape and spare Lexan and whatever to try and sort of strengthen it up a little bit Okay, so you've got your tub chassis here. Now last time what I did is I was using a shorty LiPo battery and you just have to dremel out some of this so the wires can fit, but that's the best battery I found because none of the other LiPo batteries would fit in there. So, and also there was a fix to fix the battery door so it didn't fall off. So I'll be doing that again. That was with a sort of nut and bolt that went through there. I can't quite remember how it worked now. I know you can get uh, spare 3D printed parts that sort of help that, but uh, I'm gonna try and do it with bits that I can find. Okay, so you've got your stickers here which is mostly the stripes and that goes on the back wing various other bits that's that silver bit I was saying with the roll bars so I can't quite remember how tricky these are I don't think they're too bad but there's quite a few things that need to line up properly so for the rest I'll do a magic unbox so first of all it's got to be done 
sniff the tyres guys oh sniff the tyres so uh, like I was saying before these are really good for um, the mud and everything and so they've got the spikes go right round to the sides so these can really sort of plough through the soft mud and everything so uh, yeah these are really good so the front one's a bit less good really they could do with some deeper grooves but uh, they sort of do the job okay so these are the halves of the gearbox which is the same as the lunch box so like I was saying before because it's all one sealed unit with the motor and the wheels on the end of the axles there it is very good at keeping the dirt out it's not such a good suspension setup as a modern sort of RC car but uh, I say it is pretty practical so you've got your traditional style Tamiya three-piece wheels so you have to force that bit inside the tire and I seem to remember that was very difficult to do on the back tires I seem to remember that Damien at Dusty Fingers RC had a top tip as how to get that into the back tire without taking the skin off your fingers so I'll have to go and have another look at that because I can't remember what he said now so these are just the bits that hold the front of the gearbox and let it slide up and down and some other little bits that uh, hold the suspension a few other bits and pieces on there the servo saver so that's your front suspension arms and a few other bits really bendy plastic this so you've got your driver figure here now last time i didn't manage to fit the driver in because the esc took up quite a lot of space and i'm using the same esc i'll have another look and see if it is possible to get that in it is nice to have a driver in there but uh, i seem to remember that the wires and everything uh, it wouldn't quite fit properly so that's your battery door cover and your sidebars again this is that sort of really bendy plastic wibbly wobbly aerial tube for people who are using a radio from the olden days like Mark Bryan. So your usual excellent Tamir instructions. So I'm not going to open the bags because I'm worried I might lose bits. Let's have a quick look. So I think the nicest bit of this kit are the rear shocks. You can see nice metal bodies there and uh, they're oil filled. So they're the sort of premium element of this kit. Also in there you've got various other metal bits in your pinion and whatnot. Great so bumper, nice bendy plastic again. So you've got your other gear there and your grease and body clip, a few more screws. So your nasty plastic bushings and one brass bushing, but I'm going to be using bearings for all of these. It's your standard motor, but it's a nice genuine Tamiya motor. So it's your main output gear and the differential gears there. A few more metal bits, a lot of screws and more screws so there it is quite a simple kit but i'll have fun putting that together i'm saying i'm going to be using bearings with this and a brushless set this is possibly one where the brushless set might be a bit much for it as i remember but uh, it's quite funny having a tamiya with far too much power and uh, quite like the reliability of them and the waterproofness and everything and you get a huge run time from a lipo battery with a brushless set so uh, that's what i'm going to be doing but this is one that runs very well with a standard silver cam motor so if you're getting one then possibly go standard start with and see what you think of it anyway that's enough waffle for one video thanks ever so much for watching and i'll see you next time